Oh mate, I don't. I've had a mare here. I'm. I'm. I'm stressing. I don't know where to go. I'm, oh, what, oh. Are you alright, mate? No, I'm are, stressing. Are you alright? Uh, it's pressure, mate. I, I, I attended Roy House go-karting yeah. uh, with a party with some friends from school, I think when I was like seven years old. Okay. And so you attended or you or you also drove? I did also drive. It's good to get these facts straight so you know what we're talking about. Uh, right, to be honest, I can't remember. Really? You, um, can't remember your, you can't remember your first ever time in a go-kart? Mm, no, I remember one of the, I think the first time when, basically after this, I went another couple of times with my dad. And then, uh, then they suggested that it was a bit more um, cost effective to buy a used old one. Okay. And then I took that. I remember that Wednesday night after school, I'd go Wait, to Which the, type of car was this? This is a Honda Cadet. Okay. Um, yeah. Back in oh, those so you days. went Honda Cadet? I started the four, Honda the four Cadet. Stroke the four-stroke car? The four-stroke, more reliable. Uh, and then, yeah, I did, I did Hondas for like one and a half, two years, and then Comas. And then I think in that maybe second year of Comas, I met Ollie Oakes at the time and then it was suggested that racing in Europe was a bit stronger okay. um, and so we went to Italy to do a couple races and they went really well and I kind of met a few people out there and continued it from there within Europe. And, uh, so you raced, for, you raced for a team? Yeah, I went into juniors and raced for Chiesa Corsa, okay. which was the, the team um, that Lewis and Nico actually ran for in karting when they were together. Yeah. Um, with some help from Ollie as well, um, and then I spent basically four years between Ollie and uh, Dino, who was running Chiesa Corsa as well. So, you've, so you've had that kind of connection with Italy then. Yeah, ever from since then. I was uh, eleven or twelve. Yeah, I, it, was, it was the hub of karting. Really, yeah. that's that's where everyone went. Basically, it'd be Monday to, to Thursday, be at school. Thursday night, fly out. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, racing. Sunday night, fly back. Repeat yeah. three, four times a month. Wow. Yeah, I think yeah, one, one year I did 36 weekends while I was going to school, Okay. which was incredible. And I don't see how I did it nowadays, considering we only do like 15 weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. So uh, I was a little machine when I was younger. I mean, I, I only did. I did karting the same way as people do racing now. I did a maximum 15 events a year. Yeah. And it's funny, isn't it? Because we are, we are a massively racing family. And I went all the way through university. Okay. And, and and did karting at a much lower level, club events. But what oh, age did you start I, I started at eight. Okay. We, we'll drive past it actually, yeah. North Pickenham just up here. Okay. And just pounded around there, coma cadet, coma cadet straight away, did some testing. But you know, quickly the I was at boarding school. Yeah. We realised that, that that call came, you know, that moment came where it was like, right, homeschooling or and 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 European karting or schooling, schooling, and less karting. And they and my parents, you know, because you're not really in a position to make that decision at the time, they chose to go the route of the route of schooling. Yeah. Uh, how it would have worked out if we went the other way, I've got no, I've got no idea, but you know. But it's that decision time, because I think a similar thing came from me, where either you choose to stick to the, the schooling and, you know, the racing, it, you see what happens with it, but you're not 100% with it, or you stick to racing 100% and you pursue a career in that. Yeah. And yeah. for me, it was like the school started to suffer a bit, and I, I wasn't able to attend everything I needed to. And I think for me, it was like either I'm going to commit to this or yeah. not. You know, you've got one chance. And yeah, well, that's it's brave. It's brave, and in many ways, I, I wish we'd been braver in that in that way because it certainly, you know, I think it those early days of karting we learned now are, are the days actually where even you know a little bit of your reputation starts to be yeah. formulated you know even as a, like a really really young man um but i, I came very much because dad obviously started in grass track racing and hmm. made his way through and he was quite was quite late yeah. through to, to f1 it was just a different world and so we our, our experience of of motorsport was actually not completely fresh i guess i mean do you have racing heritage or no, none just you completely we discovered it ourselves kind of yeah. with some guidance but you know it was really all our decision and to be fair 
a lot of the team decisions and that I, I took when I was like 16 years old. Wow. So, yeah. it, you know, it was, it was discovery. And I mean, we made, relative to what I see now, we made some pretty decent decisions in, in the way in the way I came up. But yeah, it's not easy because no one, no one writes, well, some people write books now, but no one writes a book for you on how to do it. No. And there are different ways of doing it. But, you know, it's, it's just, it's not straightforward at all. Best racing experience first. I would probably say karting, 2014 World Cup. I was starting 32nd. Yeah. And I managed to finish fourth within 15 laps. That was a good effort. It was a good effort. Yeah. It was incredible and really old circuit, same tarmac from the 1960s. Yeah. We weren't the quickest that weekend, but I'd always been up there. And then in the pre-final, it was wet and just carnage basically. So I, I ended up- And that's how you second. ended up at the back? Yep. Uh, I think I'd qualified third before that, but yeah, just just got caught out in the in a mess. And then yeah, thirty second, I think yeah, eighteen or twenty four carts in the first lap it was ridiculous. Yeah. Just found the space and made it through. Um, yeah, I would say that was probably the best one for me. Your best one? Um, ooh, uh, qualifying a car at Le Mans is pretty special. I've not been on pole there. Uh, we had a couple of good goes there. I'll never forgive. Karim Chandok for, for, for spinning off and ruining my app. <laughs> I still I can still remember the drive I can still remember him parked what on, the, on the outside. So 2014 we could have been 20 uh, 2016 as well could have been as well. Especially but if it was at the end of the lap. It, as well. Yeah, so I've been through all the first sector purple and then I've been through the middle sector purple. No, I haven't because he spun off in Indy. So we were up, we were, we were up anyway. Close, yeah. Uh, and he, yeah, and he spun off in Indy anyway. Um, but the, but the, best, uh, the best racing experience is probably the Nürburgring at night. We, we won with Aston um, in, uh, God, 19. And then the Nürburgring at night is just, yeah. it's just mad. It's, it's like a just, tunnel, it's I guess. brilliant. Yeah. You know, they, they're like, there's, there's parties going on uh, yeah. all, all around the racetrack and you need them because they light the racetrack for you. Awesome. And they're just, whoa, whoa, whoa. And there's like, they're building some like mad, they build some like Mad Max thing on the outside of Svalgans van. And you're, and you're just there, just there, you just see lights everywhere, it's crazy. I mean, what, you, you go and do that race, man. You go and do the warm-up lap, you do the full Nordsch life, and they let people on the track yeah. for the warm-up lap. So they're all there standing and you're driving through, and then you turn up the next time round at full racing speed and expect them all, you to, just have hope them. <laughs> expect them all to have left like that. That race is yeah. just phenomenal. Um, worst experience in racing. Wow. Worst experience in racing. Oh man, I tested. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've spent some very special days testing, <laughs> testing some cars. And it, I tested this thing called the Delta Wing. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Well, it was it was becoming the the Zod, the Nissan Zod, yeah, yeah. and it was supposed to take off. It was supposed to take off from from zero using its electric uh, power. Was it diesel? No, no. no it was no. supposed to. It was a, it yeah. was a three cylinder. That was the other Nissan. That was the, the Nissan. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was just, it was a three cylinder petrol engine in the pointy thing. Yeah. You know. Um, anyway, so I'm there at which airfield were we at? I can't remember. Bruntingford. Yes, correct. Yes. They're at Bruntingthorpe with a transit van because the electric engines didn't work yet. We were just trying to get the three-cylinder ICE unit to work. Yeah. And there with and a transit van is pushing me along the airfield at Bruntingthorpe, right? Uh, like that over those over those <laughs> <laughs> over those like aircraft yeah, things, yeah, right? The, the and then I and then I had to like press a sequence of buttons to 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 go past the electric system which didn't exist yet and then dump the clutch. And sometimes it would go, and sometimes it wouldn't. And sometimes it would just seize, and the chance I mean, yeah. Back. <laughs> and it was just, there was an element of like, what am I doing here? <laughs> and a poor mechanics as well, you know, sometimes it'd yeah, lunch yeah. itself, go back to the awning, wait five days, wait five days for them to sort it. And I just felt so sorry for everyone who was there, but they were, they were troopers trying to get that thing to work. I mean, it's not, uh, probably not as long and endured, but I remember, obviously it's not a race, so it's not a worth racing experience, but we were doing aero tests on a kind of yeah, strip yeah. Yeah, yeah. in a Formula 3. And when you do the aero tests, you lock the suspension. Yeah, yeah. So to get the ride height yeah. for each setting correct, you have to lock it and then Done you it for stop. a couple of sports cars. Yeah. 
and I ended up doing close to 800 kilometers this day, up and down. I started at eight, got out at one, 1.30 back in the car all the way till 6.30. And of course, the car's like this on the floor. Yeah. Uh, you, you end up going to about 150 mile, mile an hour, turn around. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, you're not allowed to push it in the corner either because we're, we're solid, so you'll break the, you'll break the roll bars. <laughs> when we developed the JSP2 Nissan, uh, the, the JSP2 Ligier, yeah. I did 25 days of aero testing at Chateau Roux. That's horrible, yeah. I could see lines in my sleep. Seriously, I dreamt lines. I closed my eyes, I saw lines. And it was the same, man. It was yeah. just, I can still remember you know, 80, 120, 150, 80, 120, 150, VMAX, yeah. VMAX box was the, and they'd use the algorithm to work it. Oh, yeah, they're brutal those days. The worst was the, the testing in the F2 because you'd have to do like the roll bar sweeps and aero yeah. sweeps and you would lock it out at 150 or 200 kph but you'd use the pit limiter and they would set it <laughs> in that is horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, but you've got to do it every straight. Yeah, yeah. Every straight, especially on the inlaps and the Root, brutal oh. headache. And we, we we spent, honestly, especially at the end of at the beginning of 2020, because of the new tires, we spent half of each day of testing doing this. At the end of my casting career, so I ended up winning a lot of things over four years, which was quite surprising. I was very, very quick, and when I went to the junior carts, just kind of stepped up a level. I yeah. don't know how, just, you know, came together, all the practicing, I guess. And then I spoke to Helmut Marco at Silverstone Grand Prix 2014. Um, and, uh, yeah, from there they said, OK, you go do F3 with Carlin under the Red Bull Junior team name and that's where you know the single seater started and I was thrown a bit into the deep end it wasn't easy but kind of just about came out of it yeah so you you were part of that Red Bull program on yep. the way through and after Max Verstappen so the, the idea was to follow off what he was doing yeah um, yeah and you did the whole and you did the whole you know difficult conversations with Helmer yeah yeah I've been there know. done that at a very young age on my own yeah um, what is it like then I've not, I've not driven for him, but I can only imagine it's, yeah, it's, it's not simple. I, I think the thing for me was that I didn't really understand um, what I was being thrown into, in the in the terms of like racing in Formula Three, the grid that we had, yeah. all of that, and how hard it is in one year to get to grips or be at the top with a car with strong aerodynamics and understanding that yeah. you know it took me a year to get used to it yeah understandable. but dealing with him i mean it was very simple he was very straightforward and he would be a bit uh, a bit strong with the way he communicated that but he was very straightforward with what he said and you knew that it was coming you just didn't know in which way yeah um but but i think the thing for me was the pressure i put on myself because you i, I wasn't speaking to him that regularly yeah. So I'd never thought I was doing a good enough job or I didn't know where I was at. And obviously I, I knew that it wasn't great, but I never had um, the reassurance of, you know, improvements or what. Yeah. So that's where I put a bit of pressure on myself and really actually was a, was a way I learned and a coping mechanism after that sure. because of discovering it the hard way. And now... On the uh, on the flip side with Ferrari, um, it's a very family orientated. I'm you know I'm always asking where I can improve, and the communication is obviously a lot more. Uh, it, it, it's it's there, but it's not you know put forward as harshly in, in in some ways. But in both ways, I think they both you know aim to sometimes get the best out of you. Obviously, Red Bull had a very successful run with their junior team, and they they yeah. still have a lot of strong drivers. But also Ferrari they, right they now. Break you can see. The, they break a few on the way though. Don't yeah, they? yeah. And I it's mean, really a forge for the for the for the young drivers. You you even get you get diamonds or dust. Sure, don't sure. you out of out of out of the system. For me, I think it was more like not not the right time or place. Yeah. You know, I, it, it made for me. It was it was a thing that you know was hard hard for me, but it put me in the right position. I think mentally for the long run. So what do you want to do now? You want to, you want to be in Formula One, don't you? Formula One, still pushing for it. I think there's a decent chance for next year, but you know it's it's a, it's a strange world, very uh, up and down. Things can change in a matter of seconds, but you know there's a good chance. Obviously, being reserved this year, I see see how it is and you know the situations and how it unfolds. Yeah. Um, whilst also the racing side as well. It must um, be really weird. I mean, I know you're racing in in GT3 cars and stuff, but you've 
you know, you've been doing like a really high pressure full season of single seaters. In one way I love it and in one way I don't like it. Yeah. So I love the stress free year because I have not had that for years. You know, every year, I, I, you probably felt like this, but every year felt like it was the, the decision of your life. You know, if you made it yeah. that year because you won it or you, you were at the top, that was that was a year that made or break and i had a lot of those because it was always firstly you know the trying to get the money or the trying to get the, yeah. the trying to find and put yourself in the situation where you can do it again and of course that was my last year financially and also results wise because there is an expiration date to how long you can do f2 yeah. and all of that sort of stuff so yeah i was like okay i gotta do it second brilliant and the amount of stress we had in that compacted season, I was like, okay, it's nice to have a break. But on the flip side, I'm looking, I'm watching everyone else racing in Formula One, in Formula Two, and I'm like, Ugh, you know, I want to be out there. I, I want to show what I can do, but without the stress of, you know, being judged for it. Yeah. Because I, I you know. It, you it, couldn't really do, you couldn't really do Formula Two again, no, could you? No. The, the, there's, there would be no upside. For me, the result was really good. Finding the money, finding another team late into the season yeah. and then obviously the new format makes it a bit more of a lottery it just didn't make sense yeah so the amount so far that i've learned from being a reserve driver and also test driver with ferrari it's it's incredible because i wouldn't have got that if i was doing formula 2 because i'm attending everything i see everything you know all the atmosphere and that and the the politics around it um and then on the other side I feel like the GT side of things, I just go and enjoy it. You know, yeah. it's really laid back. I'm only really there for the races, so I'm not having to do the preparation like I would for yeah. F2 and that. And you jump in and you do the job. Last year was very groundbreaking and in a way life-changing, career-changing. You yeah. know, for me, it was a real standout year, talent-wise and results-wise. Um, but this year has been an opportunity for me to learn, relax and kind of put myself in a better position and the best possible position I can whilst everything unfolds around me. So yeah, I, I'm, you know, it's, it's a different one. Like you said that obviously the single seater stuff is very stressful and you know, you've got to go, go for it. I think in some ways this year to take a step back, relax and look at everything and analyze it. It's quite a different way of- Nice approach. to have a, like a sole focus though, isn't it? Well, you have the security of it and then you have the, the drive for it as yeah. well. I mean, just jumping across, I'm jumping across from media stuff, obviously the modern sports car stuff, which is my focus, then loads of classic stuff. And I'm shop windowing myself at the moment for all of those LMDH and hypercar drives, just because I want that. Yeah. situation where you can focus on absolutely one thing and just get back into being a pure race car driver and as a, as a sports car driver coming up through that route it's really difficult because yeah. you have to jump around and wheel and deal and get yourself in cars and it's not always you know a completely pro scenario sometimes you know the gentleman driver will be the person that provides the finance and, yeah. and all that kind of thing but, I mean some years you can you can choose a bit and some years you've got to get what you can yeah, yeah. definitely definitely especially if you want to stay at the top level um and a, a, a decent level um but well, the hypercar stuff's a good opportunity what is six plus manufacturers coming in yeah yeah i mean in the first year there'll also be customer cars as well that are going to be supported by the manufacturers so yeah uh, there'll be a lot of sports car drivers they need and someone with experience will be in a good position i yeah, think to sure. to um to to take one of those seats but uh yeah the amount of times I've done Le Mans now, I've seen, well, there are things happen that every year that surprise you, but uh, I've seen the racetrack a, a few times now. Yeah. Led the race in LMP2 for 30 hours plus or so. Um, yeah, finished on the podium twice, both second. Yeah. Which is, which is tough. The worst. Yeah, well, it's you're not sure if you want to be happy or sad. Well, to be honest, if you fought to get there you know you come from a bit further back but you well, clearly so, have been so, leading so one of so one of them was where we were leading and we really should have won and then one of my teammates uh damaged the car and we had to fix the car and it put us behind the game yeah the other one was actually one of my teammates had done it earlier on and then we were pushing back through and that was actually like we're second awesome whereas like the the other one was where we, we really felt we should yeah. have won the race yeah. and it's i still have the picture of me on the podium just like uh, and actually it was that that we should have won the world endurance championship that year w without that uh incident 
for, for, for one of my teammates, we, we would have been, because Le Mans carries the most yeah. points as well. Yeah, you have the 6, 12 and then yeah. 24. Yeah, um, and so we, uh, yeah, it took us out of, the, out of Le Mans and out of the championship as well. Yeah. And it was just like, what? Yeah, what? no, second's never nice, but also so. those scenarios. Uh, you know, th those, kind of, those kind of things happen and there are always things that are out of, outside your control and all you can really do is your own job and hope that people uh, analyze you based on your own job. But sometimes that happens with yeah. the more experienced team managers that happens, but with some of the less, they just they just plain look at the results, you know, and, and yeah. you're out of it because of something you, you can't control. But that's, life, the, that's the game, that's the game. Oh mate, I don't, I've had a mare here. I'm, I'm, I'm stressing, I don't know where to go. I'm, Oh, what, what, what. Are you alright mate? No, I'm stressed. Are you alright? Uh, it's pressure mate. Can you handle it? I'm going to do a U-turn. Can you handle go it? Go on, you Honda. No, they'll be, go for long enough, there'll be a roundabout. It'll be easy to turn around. That's, it looks like a junction That's to me. That's not a roundabout, it's a T-junction. Just use these people's driveway. I'm sure I will, they mind. but there's, there's... This is Norfolk mate, everybody's nice. It's not like where you come from where everyone's all like, oh, oh punchy. Oh, I don't know mate, I'm done now. Talk to me about an F1 car on a race weekend. Right, because you get a lot of feedback from people who, you know, have tried, driven a car, let's say up Goodwood Hill or on a wet test day or something. Yeah. What What's the experience like? Like, is it is it mind blowingly quick when you first jump in, or does it feel under control, or like? It's It's amazing in a in a certain way because obviously, I, I mean, the whole atmosphere, even even being off the track, you're like this is proper because you know yeah. everyone's there for you in that sense yeah but you know getting on the track all the processes obviously lots of switches lots of procedures but yeah. on a pure lap it is incredible how fast everything is number one how fast it is number two how much you can push that car yeah. like it is uh, it's, it's well, and how it respond like how it just responds to going anything, in silly quick anything brakes uh brakes turn in power just it, it is like perfectly engineered yeah. just you know as you'd expect but uh, I it, it, it's it's hard to say but you come in like even in Red Bull Ring the other time I'm like okay so where do I need to improve um, like is it in the braking of this corner is it in the the min yeah. or the exit and they're like the whole way you need braking go min faster, and exit. basically I'm like oh, okay okay so it's literally you just have to push you have to right so there's a yourself. period of cat basically just catching up with the car yeah yeah, yeah. which which i've never had you get know, off the brakes everything yeah but even the gt like i jumped in it and they're like yeah you're missing the first run yeah you're just missing a little bit you know within the braking i'm like okay but is the rest okay yeah high speed's good yeah, and you've then, gone in yeah. a bit deep you've not gone in deep enough yeah. you've just a bit of technique whatever but jumping in that car even the formula 2 i mean i i, I did my first push i remember to, to or 2017 when i did one race in it and my first push on the soft tire i think i was within eight tenths and i'm like Okay, yeah, that's not okay. too bad. We'll tweaky tweak and we'll sort it. Yeah, and, and you're like, okay, that's a good starting point. F1, you're like, oh, I just need to push more. It's the first time I've gone in a car and you just need to push. And okay. you go beyond what you think's possible. And especially with the high speed, because it is just so planted. And also, you're limited by the front. You're not you're not limited by snaps. It can, okay. it can move on so you. So it has that like real massive stability. And you can just, and you're just waiting then yeah. a little bit for the front. Yeah. And obviously depending on what, what but then it's very sensitive got. as well to slip angles so uh, okay if you're what, in terms of tire temp uh, and, and performance, performance or just in, uh, and just in terms of how much the tire literally grips so if you yeah. over slip the tire it doesn't deliver doesn't yeah. deliver front grip that's interesting well we're both looking at you know what what we might do next you've still got uh, a well more than a sniff of a formula one seat haven't you I get a good to touch it sometimes good opportunity occasionally they let you polish it and bring some tea in uh i and drive it in fp1 yep, yep, very yep. well and go on a simulator yes so that's got to be your focus then no no for sure for sure I, it is it is enjoyable um number one it's not easy to to kind of as in it's uh, possible to enjoy it or you do no, I mean, no, no, obviously I enjoy it, but from another side, obviously it's the job element, so yeah. you've got to be very serious about it, and there is a lot of protocol to it as well, so it's quite, not stressful, but you know, there's an operation to it, which 
sometimes it's it's quite hard to see beyond that into the enjoyment you know once you've yeah. done it you're like okay that was good yeah but whilst you're doing it you know you, it's hard to enjoy the process a bit but no whilst i'm you know observing that obviously it's uh it's an impressive operation the whole f1 stuff that's why yeah. people want to do it that's why people want to be around it but on the other side with the sports car it's a bit more pure enjoyable in other ways and you know i do enjoy a future in that side i think further down the line but you so know. you got a leg on both boats then definitely at the moment yeah. you just don't want to commit to anything i can't commit yet. you can't you well, can't commit yet to be honest i i've I, there was a good word for it in italian but Callum, I I'm, I'm, re I'm ready i'm ready to commit you know well, if you can't commit yet i think i'm gonna have to as a, I'm, I'm subject to the crown so when the crown decide what i do the crown Ferrari. Oh right, yeah, okay, sure. So when Ferrari decide what I do, yeah, then yeah. then my leg, my body will fall into one side or the other.